So, I've been thinking a lot about an action plan for how to deal with my depression. I've come to realize that I need an action plan for when I become depressed. I suffer from a disease called Major Depressive Disorder. This has caused me great pain, and the way my, de my particular form of depression manifests is it's very cyclical, and I go through cycles of major depression where I can barely get out of bed, I suffer from severe suicidal ideation, thoughts of worthlessness, wanting to, you know, read words of my abusers, that sort of thing. Using that as a ex incredibly destructive coping mechanism. So what I've come up with was, I was just thinking about this. It's been something that I've been needing to do, is to actually put this action plan down. And I don't actually want to get out a pen and write it down, so I'm just going to make this video. So I was thinking about this game called Persona 4. And Persona 4 deals a lot with the sort of Jungian shadow archetype. The shadows are sort of creatures created from sort of our darkest impulses, our the sort of inner darkness within ourselves that we try to deny. Um, it's actually the part of ourselves that we are uh, most disturbed by, most hurt by. It's the part of ourselves that, that we're embarrassed by, the, our sort of true thoughts and feelings that we won't acknowledge. In the this being a video game, a JRPG, that, you know, you fight the shadows, you go into this sort of spirit world and you fight the shadows. The way the game is, it's kind of a murder mystery and like people are being shoved into this sort of shadow world and are forced to confront sort of their darkest desires in the boss fights, in the form of the boss fights. So these people that you interact with in town, you know, they all have something going on with them that that really disturbs them greatly. And when they are forced into the shadow world, their shadow archetype takes sort of a human form, like a twisted version of themselves that is an extreme exaggeration of all their worst qualities. So for instance, a woman in, in the town who gets put in the shadow world, she is really self-conscious about the idea that she is like kind of caged, like caged like a bird. And that she doesn't want to be forced down this path where she is forced to be this heiress, this princess, and she wants someone to come and rescue her. Another person is really self-conscious about the idea that he might be gay. And that was a really interesting one and particularly relevant for me as an LGBT person. There's a really clumsily handled one about a character named Naoto who has some gender identity issues. It's not handled that great, but you do go into the shadow world and you fight their shadows. Now, how do the heroes fight the shadows? Well, they have these personas, these sort of like kind of Pokemon style monsters, except they're all creatures from mythology. Now, the personas themselves are strengthened and empowered, or at least the, the main characters are, by his relationship with other people. And that his shadows, or his personas, are empowered by him building relations with, with people. So, the apart from the dungeon crawling aspect, you have to regulate your time between, you know, studying, hunting shadows in the spirit world, and also building relationships with your friends and loved ones in the game world. The anime is an adaptation of this is also very interesting, and it actually follows the game very closely, but there are some differences. All of the main characters except for the main character, all the the principal cast members except for him specifically, encounter their sort of shadow archetype. And it turns into a boss fight because it's a JRPG. But in the anime, at the tail end, the main character, he actually has to confront his own shadow, who's taken human form and is representing his darkest impulses. And in his case, his particular anxiety is he doesn't want to lose all of his friends. Like, he knows he's going to be moving away at the end of the year, and he actually kind of wants the year to never end. He wants, he actually wants the murder investigation to continue forever because it's how he has bonded with his friends. He's sort of driven into a sort of uh, heroic blue screen of death in this, in this case, but he overcomes it. And how does he overcome it? Well, all of his relationships that he's built up very decisively throughout the entire game, throughout the entire year that the story takes place over, all come together and 
into a, a persona that he uses to overcome this shadow version of himself. And it's the world arcana, because all the personas are related to tarot cards. Matisse and the world is like the tail end. Finally, he's able to overcome this this weakness in himself, and he's able to take on the true big bad evil person, which in this case is a dark goddess, a sort of twisted reflection of of, of a goddess um, from Japanese mythology. I don't recall her name. I think it was something like Izanami or Izanagi. I I, I get a lot of these Japanese con names confused when they're really similar to each other. One of his personas is called Izan. Is a something, and the bad guy is also called is a something. But this sort of twisted reflection of the goddess, goddess archetype, is the main villain in this particular game. And again, he overcomes it through his relationships. Now, what does this have to do with depression? What does this have to do with me? So, here's my plan. I want you to tap into those relationships to try and overcome my depression. I have my therapist, but I, I, I don't want him to be first line of defense. And I have my mom, but I know that one of the things I'm incredibly worried about is losing her. With the death of my father, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about you know, the possibility of also losing my mother. And that, that causes a lot of stress, and I know that I'm going to need yet another backup plan beyond her. So, my plan is to tap into the relationships. I have certain friends that I can call upon, and it's th these relationships are going to change. I mean, like, the relationships that I have now are not going to be the same ones I have a year from now, two years from now, necessarily. I mean, some of them might last, but some, uh, some of them might not. Oftentimes, the trigger for my depression actually is losing a friend, or losing a connection, or losing membership in a group. That I'm... But I'm always going to have someone. I've really put a lot of work into building these relationships. I'm going to make sure that I contact these people when I'm in a hole, using my connection with them, letting them know that I'm in distress, that I'm in pain. Now, the depression fallacy that my mind tells me is on a, they, they don't want to hear about your problems. They, they, they can't be bothered. You shouldn't burden them with your dark thoughts and whatnot. I need to remember is that doing this, calling upon them when I'm in pain and when I need help, is an act of trust. Yes, it uses the relationship, but it can potentially also build the relationship. It shows them that I trust them, that I am willing to come to them when I am in this state of mind where I'm not rational. And that actually is really important too, because the truth is that when I'm severely depressed, when I'm in the hole, I am not rational. The thoughts I have of wanting to jump in front of a train, wanting to find a gun, blow my brains out, whatever, those are not rational thoughts. And I need people who are in a more rational state of mind to remind me, to help help me pull me out of this hole. Now, after those people, I can also go to my therapist, whoever it is. Um, currently, it's a guy named Ben, but if it's not Ben, I'm going, it'll, it'll be someone else. I will make sure that when I'm healthy, I always maintain continuity of care with someone. So that is my action plan. I think it's really important that other folks have an action plan. Other folks who are experiencing depression also have an action. Use your friends. Use your friends. Be there for them too. Be, when you're healthy, be there for them. That's what friendship is for. That's what family is for. You are not alone. You are not. You have these personas. You can fight the shadows. You can fight the dark. You can turn the tide. It's like the Babadook movie that my therapist described to me and I watch. Don't let him in. Living with a mental illness, it is a lot like the Babadook. You know, the Babadook's always going to be in your basement. Sometimes the Babadook gets out and you have to, and you have to stuff him back in the basement. And you have to use your personas, your friendships, your, the relationships that you built, that you put a lot of work into building. We are